Hi, my name is Moran, and today I'm going to share with you some exercises for type 2 diabetes. Exercise is really important if you have type 2 diabetes because when you use the energy in your body to build muscle and move, you're going to use more glucose in your bloodstream. That's going to really help control your blood sugars. Also, we're going to be building muscle, so we're going to focus on strength training and getting our heart rate up because that's also going to take more glucose to maintain that muscle mass. So this is all really good in the long run, and the sooner that you do it and the more frequently that you do it and stay consistent, the easier it's going to get. You're going to be feeling really good. So we're just going to focus on a circuit. It's kind of high intensity, but if you're brand new to this, don't be worried. It's going to be really good for you, and we can ease into it as slowly and gently and softly as we want, and we can make it as difficult as we want to. This is just a very basic workout with exercises that are going to work your whole body. It's going to tag your core and your cardio, and it's going to be very efficient in doing all of these things. So I'm just going to go over the basic movements. This is going to be circuit one. We're going to run through two circuits. So we'll do circuit one, and we'll go through it a few times together, and then we'll do circuit two. So the first movement is just a squat. We're just going to stand with our feet shoulder width apart, and then bending the knees, you're going to push your hips back as if you're going to sit into a chair. Let's go ahead and raise our hands up and out so that it counterbalances our weight, continuing to bend at the knees, and our chest is going to slightly fall down. It's going to be straight still. Our back is still straight, but it's not going to be like this. We're just we're going to let it kind of tilt downwards a bit and focus on trying to get a 90-degree angle with your legs. Standing up, you're going to exhale, squeezing the glutes, squeezing the core. Protect that spine. Work that core. If this seems too difficult to you, you are more than welcome to use a chair. I highly recommend making sure it's not going to slide, put up against a wall or on carpet, and don't sit all the way in it. So the best way to do this is to sit at the very edge of the chair. Form that 90 degree angle with your legs, putting your heels right underneath your knees. Bring your hands out straight in front of you, and with a big inhale and then exhale, stand up. Inhale as you go down slowly, and you can sit down if you like, but when you get good at this, you really just want to tap your butt to the chair to stand up. So that's how you can start doing squats if you don't feel comfortable doing it without a chair or somebody squatting you. So the most important thing about squatting is to make sure you really engage that core, engaging those glutes, and you're breathing, you're exhaling as you come up. That's really going to protect your spine and your core. So the next exercise we're going to do after the squats is just going to be a lunge twist. We're going to take a big step forward, dip down, twist over, and then step back, other leg, dip down, twist over, the exhale is with that twist, working that core, stabilizing that spine. If you need to take a step in a corner direction, that's going to give you more stability, more width in your stance. You can do so. And if you need to use a chair or a wall that you can hold on to, you can even start without stepping, just spreading your legs out apart like this and bending down, twisting, standing up. You're not going to be able to alternate in this spot, but at least you can strengthen your muscles until you can get to the point where you're walking out into the lunge, and then alternating the opposite leg. If you decide to start in a static lunge, just make sure that you switch legs and do the other side too. The next exercise in the set is going to be a squat side leg lift. So we're going to do the squat already. Nice little squat. We're just going to gently lift our leg to the side. And what this is going to do is going to work the abductor and the adductors, which is also your glutes and the inner and outer parts of your hamstrings. So when we lift, you want to make sure you don't kick. It's okay if you can't go really high. You can just lift to where you feel your muscles flex, and then a nice little squat. You can go as deep in a squat as you want, or if you feel comfortable, just a little squat, little lift, little squat, little lift. Again, you can put a chair in front of you if you need to hold on to it. There's no problem with that. I really just want to focus on these muscles. And lastly, we're just going to do some jumping jacks. So nice, light jumping jacks, full arm range of motion with the arms. If you need to, slow it down. That's good. Just start somewhere 
and build yourself up. You don't have to go crazy, just move a little bit. Any little that you do is going to be really good for your body. And if you feel like that's too hard, you can just do little bounces here, like this. So let's go ahead and do this set together one time before moving on to the circuit. We're going to do 10 of each exercise. If we're doing something like a lunge, we're going to focus on doing 10 on each leg. So let's start with a squat. Tight core, tight glutes. Inhale, sit back. Good. Exhale. Remember to go at your own pace. I'm going to go at a certain pace, but if you need to slow it down, slow it down. If you need to go faster, you can pick it up too. Good. Make sure you keep those heels on the ground. Get your glutes, your butt, and your hips back really far. Keep that core tight. And then exhale at the top. One more. Good. Let's go ahead and lunge twist right here. Again, if you need to do static, that's fine. If you need something to hang on to, that's fine too. Big step. Good. Step back. Other leg. Nice. That's one. Make sure your back knee doesn't touch the ground. Make sure you're lunging down into the lunge and you're not leaning in any way. You're straight up and down. It's a down up motion. Down and up. Good. Keep your shoulders over your hips. Very nice. Chest up, shoulders back. Make sure you really twist into that core. If you need to take a break, that's fine. Take a short break, a couple breaths, and then get right back into it. And I believe this is our last one. You feel yourself sweating already? This is what you want. Let's do one more just in case. We want our heart pumping a little bit. Increase that blood flow and that oxygen flow. Okay, so we're going to do a little squat, leg lifts. Remember, it's not about kicking. It's about lifting. Your leg does not need to be entirely straight. Good. How do you feel? Nice. Big exhale. Got four more on each side. Three more now. Tight core all the time. Exhaling is going to help with that tight core. Last one. Should be controlled. Good. Big breath. And let's jump and jack 30 times. Here we go. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Again, if you need to slow it down, that's fine. If you feel like 15 is better, that's fine too. I'm going to pick up the pace a little bit. 16, 17. Go at your own pace. Push yourself a little, but don't kill yourself. Touch your hands at the top and at the bottom on your thighs as well. Good. Whew. Now what you're going to do is take a 30 to 60 second break before doing that circuit again two more times. So this next set is not nearly as cardio intense. We're going to focus on tagging the rest of our body, which is going to be our chest and our shoulders, our obliques, as well as some of our back. So let's go ahead. While you're taking a break, I'll show you what the exercises are. The first exercise is going to be push-ups. You're going to get in plank position, lower yourself, exhale. If a push-up is too much, you can bring your knees down. I really recommend to keep your feet together at the ankles without crossing. Just keep them nice and together, keep your back flat still, and you can push up from here. If that's too difficult, bring yourself to a table pose with your knees right under your hips and just slowly lower your forehead to the ground and push up. If that's too difficult, find a wall or a table that you can put your hands on. Doesn't matter what level you're at, we can find any place to start. So 
this is really good. You just get flat, bring yourself down, and this time your belly is going to go to the ground instead of your chest, or use a wall. The next exercise, since we're already down in this position, is going to be these overextends. So this is what's going to happen. Your hands are here. You're going to push and overextend. And then you're going to squeeze your shoulder blades together. <sighs> squeeze. It's going to look like this when you're on the ground. <sighs> it is so important that you don't stick your neck out when you do this and that your back does not sag. So you want to keep it flat. If you can't keep it flat, move down just like you would in the push-up position like this, or right here. These ones you can perform on the wall as well. Next exercise, we're just going to turn around. Keeping our feet flat on the ground, you can put your hands in prayer position in front of your chest, lean back, and touch the ground. Touch the ground. Touch the ground. These are Russian twists. If you want them to feel more difficult, lift your ankles off the ground. Don't cross them. Keep them just together at the ankles. And do the same. And if it's too difficult for you, you can sit up more. If you're not comfortable sitting on the ground, you can perform these in a chair. All you need to do is sit on the edge of the chair, lean back a little bit, and touch the side of the chair. Touch the side of the chair. Like so. After that, we're just going to do some butt kicks. It's like jogging in place, but I really want you to focus on trying to kick your butt with your heels. If that's too difficult, Go ahead and keep them rocking side to side. So let's go ahead and run through the set one time together. We're going to do 10 of each and then 30 of the butt kicks, just kind of like last time. Let's go ahead and start with the push-ups. Here we go. One. Exhale on the push. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Go at your own pace. Eight. Nine, ten. Good. Now to the right of the anterior. It's a weird overextend here with arms, pinch shoulder blades. Stand out. It's a very small motion. It will help keep our posture up. Last one. Feel it in the core too. Let's turn around and do these Russian twists. Here we go. Ten on each side total. One, two. Three, four. Make sure you touch the ground. Get that full range. Squeeze the abs. Three more. Two. Last one. Good. And let's go ahead and butt kick 30 times. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Chest up, tight core. Keep that breathing nice and heavy, um, deep and consistent. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good job, guys. Make sure you take a good break and then repeat that circuit two more times. So as previously, we discussed how vital it is for you to make sure you get moving and build muscle, exercise that body on a regular basis. The cool thing is, if this feels like it's too much or you simply don't have the time, you're more than welcome to break it up during your day. Start your day with just 10-15 minutes, cycle through that first circuit three times, and then you can do the other circuit later. However you want to break it up, make sure you're moving at least 30 minutes a day, five days a week. You can also include activities that you enjoy, such as going for walks, any sports or leisure that you like to do. Make it fun and make it consistent. Make it a lifestyle choice that you can change and that you can see yourself implementing for the rest of your life. So thank you guys for watching. I hope that helps you and I hope you enjoyed these exercise tips for diabetes too. We'll see you next time.